So thank you very much to everyone for coming today. Um, Adrian, as you know, is wonderfully talented. This is a survey of three decades of her practice. And the first work in this exhibition is this little modest um, touch of embroidery called Lizzie Bogan. Do you want to talk a little bit about it and how it's made? And, um, yeah. Well, this was the first work I, um, I made uh, after art school. And it was my first experiment with um, textiles. So uh, first time I worked with embroidery, um, which I taught myself from a book. And you can see I'm just experimenting with different um, em embroidery stitches and techniques. And that was just a fun sort of um, take on a nursery rhyme with, which, with quite a gruesome uh, understory. And then I sort of went into um, these other nursery rhymes, which were, were interesting to me because they had sort of double meanings. Um, and I was, at this point, I was traveling in Italy. And so it was great to have something that I could keep working on while I was traveling. So I had just a little bag with embroidery cottons on, and it was a really great way of making art while I was on the move. Um, and from there, I um, had a, a few years after that where I sort of made a, a textile works but moved into sort of video and other kinds of uh, work. I had a bit of a gap from the textiles for a while. And then... Um, so what is it about the textiles that intrigues you? Like what, why not painting or sculpting? Or... Um, well, I sort of had a, a history in textiles because my grandmother was really great sort of uh, craftswoman making um, dressmaking and um, knitting and all those sort of domestic crafts. So I had a love of that kind of aesthetic. But I think also the fact that, you know, you can you don't need a big space to, to work. You can work sort of on your lap and small. And, and I actually started um, on these ones here uh, when I was in Paris. So again, it's the same thing um, as this one where, you know, you can work work on something when you're when you don't have a studio and you you're on the move you, you know it's a it's a quick and easy way of working so um i actually sourced the background tapestries when i was in paris and then just added to them sort of inserting myself into the scene um as an interesting way of sort of sort of the uh, post-colonial idea where um these are sort of French badulas, but I sort of added in a sort of some Australiana, so I could inhabit that landscape, um, and that was just a fun way of, of approaching that. Your work also has a lot of width as well, so in text, like so you take yeah. to Latin. So. Yeah, I was sort of I I was using the Latin text as a sort of. Um, a way of sort of heroicizing my activity a little bit, I think, and sort of um, giving it a little bit of weight. Yeah, so I, I sort of like to play with language a little bit. You'll see that in other works. Um, I sort of jump, you know, there's a few years in between these series, but um, this one as well, it, it's a tapestry, um, a commercially made tapestry based on the Bayou tapestry. And I worked myself into that scene. But I also um, added to the original Latin. So in, in the background of this series, I've used um, sort of lingo from SMS texting. So there was, you know, SOS, YOLO, um, FOMO, there was a whole lot of work that had those sort of contemporary um, texting language and I sort of wanted to, to bring that into the work and to sort of give it a contemporary feel. But also that the, the Latin, the, the contemporary text related to the scene as well. So there was a sort of um, but also double the, meaning. Also with this particular work as well, the um, tapestry is actually telling a historical um, event 
which doesn't actually depict any women. So in a way, you can yeah, see yeah. So I was, as well. yeah, I was. That was my interest with the Bayou Tapestry was sort of um, a revisiting of that um, history and a sort of feminist perspective, and adding in uh, myself into the picture. And on that note, maybe we should say this exhibition is called All About Me. Yeah. The whole, it, so the focus of it is you. What is it? Why are you using yourself as a vehicle for your practice? That's a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's it's quite easy, and it allows me, you know, having the the subject of the work stays the same, but the medium changes. So I've been able to explore self-portraiture through a whole range of mediums. Um, and that, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting thing to do. You know, you can do, you can work with embroidery, you can work with tapestry. By changing the mediums, I can sort of explore myself in, in a more open way, perhaps, and, and bring lots of different elements in. One so, of the things I liked about was one of the works in the Queensland Art Gallery is My Life as a Doll. Yeah. Um, and then in this, the front room, we've got the two sculptures in the gallery, in the South East Regional Art Gallery's collection for the two of us, yeah. that you and Peter, and it's everyday things that you're doing. Do you want to talk about how the original project came about and the collaboration with different people? Yeah, so that was um, a project that I started in, I think it was 2001, and uh, we went to, um, we're in the UK and we went to Miniatura, which is a miniature art festival and we discovered that everything that exists in the real world also exists in tiny doll doll like world um, at a, in a tiny scale and it was just fascinating to me and when I came home I decided that it could be interesting instead of making my own portrait to commission other people to create my portrait so I sort of sent out emails across the world to people who worked with porcelain dolls, dollhouse dolls, and sent them sort of performance photographs and asked them to create as closely as possible um, my portrait from the photos I'd sent. So I, I commissioned other people to create a portrait of me. So I still think of it as a self-portrait, um, just with a slightly different um, Emphasis, yeah. yeah. So and and the photos that I got them to work from um, were very much stylized and you know showed different activities to sort of draw out the the, the really intimate details um, of the portraits. Mm, fantastic. Yeah. Um, we might go over here to these both of them since they are not worth it. Yeah. Would you like to talk about how this body of work can support you? Um, I, well, I like to recycle and I like to use materials that come to hand and uh, I, I came across some discarded patchwork projects of somebody and I thought, oh, well, you know, I can use that as, as a background to add to. And um, I, I, you know, I wanted to take it sort of out of the, um, the traditional sort of homely, very homely idea of um, patchwork and quilting. So I wanted to add something that was a little bit feistier. And so I thought of you know, representing myself with these placards as a sort of sense of protest. And all the um, texts on the work are things that people said to me about my work. Um, so I sort of, some of them good, some of them not so good, but I kind of, um, took them and used them as a starting point. And it was sort of a fun thing to do. Um, and so not worth it was a particularly harsh comment that somebody made about one of my works. But, you know, sort of by taking it and turning it into a work like this, it sort of changed the whole dynamic and um, made it a fun thing mm. rather than something that was well, that's kind it. of harsh. That's one of the things about your practice is that um, you've got skills and talent, but it's also a very conceptual entity. So um, that's it, like this work here, and then in the next room here, 
we might just go into look at your, so we're talking about recycling again. Yeah. You've actually bought things online, these tea towels. Yeah. And then using text and humour, you've actually made artwork responding to it. So do you want to talk a little bit about this series? Yeah, so I think using the, the placards and the speech bubbles kind of, um, it allows me to also to talk directly to the viewer. So um, you can see sort of exactly what, what I'm on about. So it's a, you know, I, I use the speech bubbles and or the thought bubbles as a way of, of conveying that um, very directly um, so that the viewer knows exactly what I'm thinking. And it's sort of a little bit like a dialogue, I guess. Um, and I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with it, you know, I don't want it to be too serious. And um, the Australiana tea towels are beautiful anyway. I mean, the imagery is very strong and very colourful and it's playful anyway. So I just sort of wanted to emphasise that playful nature of it, but also again, with a bit of an edge. So there's sort of certain things like the pretty fishy one, um, you know, that I was sort of thinking a little bit about um, when I was making that, that was the sort of the time when, you know, there was the, the, the fish kill, you know, the, um, where all the fish died in, in the river and there were, there were lots of things happening politically. There was the, you know, Great Barrier Reef Foundation, you know, that was given tons of money. <laughs> um, and I just sort of thought, oh, these slogans sort of, on one level, they're just a, a fun throwaway comment, but they sort of relate to other uh, things that are happening. So that was sort of the idea behind that, sort of having layers of meaning that might not immediately be obvious, but that um, people can take what they like from it. Yeah. And do you want to talk quickly about this book here, Everyday Me? Is this um, a sculptural diary of yeah, mundane things? This was a, um, a project that started out as a sort of quick, fun way of just recording everyday activity. So um, some more banal things like, um, you know, blow drying your hair, having a bath, doing a bit of sewing, checking emails. Um, it's just, it was just a sort of fun project uh, using recycled cardboard boxes. The idea was that um, it was going to be quick and it was going to be fun. And, um, and how many did you make today? Uh, I think I've got about 150, yeah. So I started off doing one every day and I soon learned that that was too much. <laughs> anyway, that was supposed to be quick and fun, it was too much work. So I sort of, uh, after a while, I just sort of changed it so that if there was something that was um, a little bit remarkable about the day, then I would record that. So this one here. The yes? Y yeah, yes was, um, the uh, uh, marriage equality vote. Um, this one here was when I just spilt a cup of coffee. <laughs> so there were just you know little things that you know stuck in my mind. I thought, oh yeah, that would make fun a fun doll. Okay. Yeah. Um, drop my drop my pins. Um, this one here was uh, stop piling. Uh, toilet paper <laughs> at the start of the pandemic. Um, yeah, so it's all fairly banal, but I think when you have, when you repeat the idea, it starts to have impact. So it's, it's a very simple idea. It's a very, very um, straightforward approach but yeah but it's also it's a celebration of everyday life and it's something yeah. that's not always addressed in art so yeah yeah i was happy with it i could i could do a few more i think i sort of might get back to that project <laughs> yeah do you want to talk about your russian dolls um, and how they're different chapters in your life yeah so i started working on russian dolls um Oh, probably about 20 years ago. Uh, I think there, it's, I think it's a 
really interesting way of making a self-portrait because you can represent, you know, each doll can show a different aspect to the person. So um, this one's called Ten Black Dresses and it's just um, memorialising different dresses that I've had, <laughs> um, which were all special in some way. And so I, I wanted to, you know, depict myself in, in that. And um, this one is in the kitchen. So it just shows, you know, um, cooking and preparing food. And, you know, I just liked the idea of each doll maybe having a little change of focus so that they're like a composite portrait. Um, it's just not one view, it's multiple views. Uh, this is the most recent one and it's called Aussie Animals and Me. And that was just, um, just wanted to sort of show the, the native animals and so it was sort of a, uh, the idea was a sort of protective thing, um, hopefully sort of uh, showing my love of Australian animals and um, I wanted to to include them because that's you know something that's really important to me the sort of pro protection of native species. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indigenously known people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got a variety of animals there that are all very dear to me. <laughs> and do you want to talk about your most recent artwork which you've made? Uh, yeah, this one I just finished a few days before installation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really even know what I think about it yet, but the, um, the, the series is called Self Portrait as a Goddess and the, these are all based on uh, Greek goddesses. So we've got Artemis, Hestia, Aphrodite, who's over there in the corner, Athena, Demeter, and Nike. And so I was just, it was sort of playing with the idea, you know, the self-obsession. Um, I just wanted to extend that out a bit, you know, because it's, it is a vanity project when you keep uh, doing your own self-portrait again and again and again. And so I just sort of thought, oh, well, I'll take on that sort of, <laughs> the sort of vanity of it and um, push it a bit further. <laughs> but you've also got recycled nude material as well. Yes. You know, there's, there's references to other artwork because there's a tendency where a lot of your works reference yeah. earlier work and extend yeah. upon it as well. Yeah, so it. this one over here, um, that's uh, Athena, goddess of wisdom, so that's why I've got the owl and things like that. But then I included the, the books and some of my reading material and um, yeah, so that was just sort of drawing out the idea of the self-portrait a bit more. I think that's... Does anyone have any questions or want to ask Ethan anything? <laughs>